what is going on guys? It is Derek with Raleigh Restoration. Today we're going to go over the age-old question, airbrush or hand painted. So there are a couple pros and cons to each of these. Um, honestly, the airbrush, it takes a while to clean. Um, you have to tape up the shoe a little bit more. The paintbrush you can be a little more free with. You'll see we only just tape up parts of the shoe for that. Um, I'll do a more thorough one over the airbrush and over the hand brush. If you guys are interested in that, go ahead and comment below. If you want me to go ahead and do a separate one for airbrush, where I'll go very in detail. Um, about cleaning, prep, procedure, all that stuff, and I can do the same with the paintbrush too. This one's basically going to show you is one better than the other. So I get a lot of questions all the time, should I get an airbrush or should I hand paint? Or whenever I post a midsole repaint, a before and after, people say, did you hand brush this? Did you airbrush them? So today we're going to go and see if there is a big difference between the final result of a hand brush pair and an airbrush pair. We're going to do both of them side by side. We're going to kind of go through some of the steps and then basically show you guys the comparison and see if there really is a difference, if one's more smooth, um, if one looks more full, and things of that nature. So I want to take a second and just let you guys know that the midsoles have already been stripped. I did use midsole magic. I don't want to keep hitting you over the head with my products. If you do support me, you can check out the video here and cop it. If you find acetone or another alternative midsole magic works for you, go ahead and get that. I'm just trying to get you guys the information. I hope that's helpful. And I didn't want to go over the whole entire process again as we have a video for that. We do need to update it, but we do have a video for it. And I don't want to show you that process again. All right, so the first thing we got to do for both of these is do a little bit of prep work. Just grab some tape. Then just go ahead and start taping up the midsoles. I go ahead and start on this edge right here and just kind of use my fingernail to work it into the rubber between the midsole and the rubber. This colorway in particular is pretty easy since it has the contrasting rubber outsole that is blue against the white on the midsole. Some are a little more difficult, but just take your time if you're not comfortable with this and just continue taping all the way around the shoe. So in this next part, I just over tape the rubber. I'm going to go ahead and just pull out the X-Acto knife. This is the only area that I use the X-Acto knife is on this little curve that I see right here. And the rest I just like to hand tape. I feel like I'm more accurate with hand taping as opposed to letting the X-Acto knife create the line for me. Now I'll just continue to go ahead and taping up the rest of the shoe. You'll see on that same corner I go ahead and use the X-Acto knife again, but the rest of it I just use my fingernails to work that into that rubber between the midsole. So the only difference between doing a hand painted versus an airbrush is that we need to do an extra step. I just need to cover the upper and the sole. I do the sole just to be safe because I like to kind of move the shoe and get up in this air unit. You'll see that when I'm spraying it, but I just cover the sole just to be safe so I don't have to do any extra cleanup. And then you want to cover the upper. If you're comfortable with literally just taping this part and airbrushing, that's cool. Um, this is the way I do it. So I need to just figure out how to like cover this upper and like the sole like real quick. Not too bad. Alright, so all I did was just tape up the upper on the leather and the elephant print, put a plastic bag over it and tape that over, and then continue the bag underneath, or you can use tape underneath, whatever's easiest. Basically just get it covered in whatever way you'd like, there's a bunch of ways to do it. So for today's example, we're going to use the airbrush paint by Jacquard. Again, no sponsorships or affiliations. If that does come about, I'll let you guys know so you know it is sponsored. I just like how easy this is to use. To attach to your airbrush, there's no straining, there's no too thin, there's no additives. And until we do an in-depth guide on airbrushing, um, again, comment below if you want to see that. I'll go more in detail. But for now, I can say still do light coats. I see too many people get an airbrush and just load up on paint. That's no excuse to load up. It's still going to crack. You need to do thin coats and let them dry. Again, I'm not going to show you every coat that I add on here. This is just showing you one, and these are going to be repeated because it's just going to eat up your time, and I don't want to make this a super long video. So that's one coat right there, and that's what that should look like, and just repeat that process till it's full. Then we move on to drying the shoes. Again, I'm not going to show this every time, but I use the fan here and I'll just turn this on and let this air kind of come across. This is really good for acrylic paints. If you know Des Customs, he did a whole video on this explaining why you do this and don't use a heat gun. Uh, just know that after each coat, I'm going to go ahead and do this to let these dry, let that air come across to get that moisture or the water out of the acrylic paint. And then I'll go ahead and just rotate the shoes to make sure it kind of hits all over after a few minutes. But again, about five, 10 minutes with this and these are good to go. Uh, we end up doing about three or four coats. I'm not going to show you all those, but just know that this is a step that I do in between each coat to make sure these are dry and they are going to be durable and wearable. So right here I'm showing you how I fill out the air units with the airbrush. Again, I said start and stop off the shoe. I guess this is the only exception. You're not going to get much buildup on the midsole as you're mainly shooting into the air units. Uh, this is the way that I do it. If you know a better way, this probably isn't the best way. Just let me know down in the comments, but this is how I do it for now and it seems to work great. I don't really get any buildup on the midsole as I again am spraying very light coats. So here's a few more slow motion shots just to show you starting off the shoe and finishing off the shoe. Just kind of how light we are going and how smooth we are moving and we're letting all these coats dry. I believe this is coat two or three, but let those dry in front of the fan um, for about five to ten minutes between each coat here. 
So I wanted to at least show you me taping these up. This is the same exact process, but I thought I'd speed through this quickly. Again, just want to keep them separate so it's really easy to keep the flow of the video to show you the airbrush and then go ahead and show you the hand paint here in the second portion. Same method, just taping everything up. I don't use the exact knife on this because this angle isn't as hard, but just go ahead and tape this up all the way around. So again, today I actually happen to be using the Jacquard paint. This is the Neopake Black, just because I like it's a more full body than the Angelus. Angelus does work, but I just happened to use this today. Um, as you saw in this one, especially with the full body, we can do a whole nother video on that. If you guys do want to, again, comment below on how to cover up those pores on those really bad damaged midsoles or just the factory midsoles that are poor, like black cement threes and these laser fours have it a lot. Just let me know if you guys do want to see that. But again, just doing thin coats here, letting them dry in front of the fan for about 10 minutes and just keep applying the coats till it's nice and full. So in true fashion, we're going to go ahead and wrap these up and we'll take a closer look. I got some before and afters and I'm going to show you guys some close up panning just to show you guys the midsoles. And if you didn't see that porousness before, here's a picture right here. And yeah, these are in pretty bad shape. I actually am going to use the airbrush to put the finisher on here, but you can hand paint it. It's just that I'm going to have the airbrush loaded up with the finisher to do this one. And on these, I see way too many people just matte out the top entirely like super matte and it's got a little bit of a sheen to it so just leave the paint as is don't add a finisher especially if you're using jacquard it's a nice natural finish and then add the gloss on the bottom that's going to be a really good final result to make it look factory this one is going to be gloss all over so i'm going to go ahead and finish that up and we'll do some close-ups on these Alright guys, so as you can see, it doesn't really matter which method you use, they both can come out really clean. It's just honestly whatever you're comfortable with and what tools that you do have available. If you guys do have any comments or questions about those, I can try and help you in the meantime while we do get those videos ready for you in the future. I hope that answers some questions for you guys and you did find some useful information in that. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Oh.